Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Brilliant Bankers. So this channel is all about the online certification courses which is being provided by Indian Institute of Banking and Finance. So we have already uploaded 2-3 videos on the cyber crime. So please do watch the, those videos for their continuity. If you are new to this video, if you are uh, please like, subscribe and share for your friends too. Okay, hope you like the video. So let's get started. We have already explained what is cyber crime, what are the different types, kinds, and what are the cyber laws, etc. Okay, now we are going to see the cyber crime methods. So cyber crime methods, as you see, the first topic is cyber stalking. This I have already explained in the previous video. So once again, I'll tell you, cyber stalking is that it is a criminal practice and it is a technology-based attack. Just uh, this is to target a particular person to spoil their goodwill or their company goodwill uh, for uh, just for the um, and if you have any revenge or if you have or it's maybe it is for anger or revenge or to control that particular person's growth um, or to defame a person in the public platform by sending uh, messages through email social media chat rooms instant messaging clients and any other online medium so sending harassing through the phone calls also it uh, send, uh, sending a fake messages or posting the fake information regarding a person or a company through the in a public platform and uh, uh, spoiling their goodwill so uh, many uh, there is no unified legal approach to cyber stalking but many governments have moved uh, making these practices uh, a punishable law Okay, cyber stalking is sometimes referred to as internet stalking, e stalking, uh, or online stalking. Uh, so please do remember these terms internet stalking, e stalking, and online stalking. Okay, so next is domain names. Domain names include that is uh, IP address and domain name. So this IP address is nothing but it is an electronic address uh, which is given for the computer okay internet is a network of computers right so these computers are said uh, said network has its own distinct entity and presence okay so uh, this address as you have this address is like as you have a home address now to uh, same way this computer also this network also is having the uh, some address this address is called electronic address so this address will be give, uh, given by numerical values like uh, it is given there 2.2025415.75 like that so it is uh, it, this ad, uh, ad, ip address is less like a phone numbers so it is um, very hard to remember right so for that only the domain name has come so next topic is domain name so domain name is that uh, even if it is given like uh, the numbers for all, everything if it is given even if you, we can't remember uh, everyone's uh, contact number right so we all store in the phone so it is easy to um, go and dial in we call, to call the person so same way this number is very difficult for us to rem uh, keep in number so that's why they have uh, evolved an internet domain names in the to, uh, to under, uh, for the understanding of the common man's language and it is very easy to remember which is which point to a specific IP address. So for example, www.google.com. So that Google is the domain name. Okay, so this uh, so you, here you have domain name and subdomain name. That is www is the subdomain name and uh, Google is the domain name. So this this has been evolved just for the easy remembering uh, remembering uh, for the in common man's language. Okay, next is component of a domain and component of a domain name you have um, first you have top level uh, domain name uh, and you have a second level domain name okay this top level domain name is uh, you can shortly call as TLD okay so for example you have uh, that is um, www.iibforg so this org could be called as the top level domain name so IIBF is the domain name and the .org or .com is called the top level domain name while the IIBF will be could be uh, called as the second level domain name. So once again, I'll tell you. So if you have an uh, address like this, uh, um, www.com. 
iibf.org this www is the sub domain iibf is the second level domain name and dot uh, that org is the top level domain name okay clear next is categories of uh, top level domain name this categories of top level Uh, domain names that is clearly is top level domain name so you here you have two categories so in the first category you can see this uh, .com .net org .edu all these are for the registering uh, for these terms are used for registering the domain names and the norms that were that .com this simply uh, .com is given for the commercial organizations the rest dot net dot org dot edu are given for the non commercial organization network providers uh, like a uh, network providers government agencies and educational inst institutions okay clear so this top level domains are the uh, the after the domain name you get the dot com dot net dot org dot edu these are called top level domain name in that the dot com is given for the commercial organization okay and the dot net org edu are given for the non commercial organization or network providers government agencies and educational institutions okay the second category of uh, top level domain in is that giving the country code okay for say for india it is given dot in okay for if you have a, a web address like www uh, um say for a google dot in then this in means the country name so this is the second category of the top level domain name for the category of the uh, top level domain have we have two levels one is that dot com dot uh, uh, net dot org edu giving that next is giving the country code so these are the two categories of the top level domain names next these domain names were initially registered in the network sol uh, solutions who were the uh, monopoly to register the said tlds later after uh, so many years later in 1999 the internet corporation assigned names and numbers have been uh, uh, started uh, has been allowed to uh, accredit the register to give the re for registering the domain names okay next is this registering the names in the icann uh, it is given uh, the first come first served basis okay who are approach with the domain name per for the first time they will uh, that uh, domain name will be registered for them later if anyone come for this uh, same with the same domain name it will not be given to them for example here uh, you have an example Okay. next is uh, the registration of the domain name the registration of the domain name as uh, as i told you already it has been done by icann and it is given first come first served basis so whoever approach with this uh, unique uh, domain name first that they will be getting uh, get uh, registered with the domain name so the if, if someone comes later with the same name they will not get registered for example uh, one mr amit mehrotra he all uh, he uh, registered this domain name like www.microsoft.org by, uh, by this person even before the microsoft microsoft corporation has been uh, started so later this microsoft corporation they tried to set a trademark with the uh, domain name uh, to set this www.microsoft.org uh, to be registered in their um, name of microsoft corporation but they could not register this name because it has been already been registered by someone else so this registration is done by uh, first come first served basis okay next is domain names different trademarks this domain names uh, different from trademark is that domain name can be registered only once and that is also first come first served basis but the trademarks can be uh, can be registered for the different times by different persons in different categories and different line of business okay so that is different domain names different from trademarks next next is cyber scotting cyber scotting is that 
it's an act of uh, registering an internet domain name that is almost exactly same like identical like already which is existing popular trademark name rightfully to belongs to someone else that is uh, registering a trade uh, trademark registering a name which is exactly similar identical to a popular business name for their uh, monetary gains is called uh, cyber scotting okay cyber scotting in recent trends and latest trends has been given so this internet history while some corporate players have been willing to and have indeed cuffed up money to get back their legitimate domain names and the recent trend is to move towards taking the cyber scotters by the thorns and fighting them out by the legal process okay uh, next co uh, courts throughout the world including in india have been proactive and have been granting injunctions to stop the cyber, cyber scotters from operating their websites next is later uh, most effective trend in cyber scotting that is um you can uh, file uh, a complaint in uh, if any cyber scotting has been happened you can file a complaint in uh, domain name dispute resolution policy so under this you can if you uh, if you've been through any cyber scotting uh, crime or something like that you can complain that your uh, uh, in um, domain name dispute resolution under this uh, domain name dispute resolution policy which has been duly approved by ICANN okay so there are uh, under this policy there are a few uh, companies which have been also beginning to get back their legitimate domain names to get uh, by com uh, by complaining uh, under this policies uh, there are few uh, companies who have uh, uh, reclaimed their uh, uh, domain names. They are um, www.theeconomictimes.com and www.timesofindia.com who have won back under the said policy. And uh, two recent success of Indian companies under the said policy include winning back that is www.tata.org and www.philipsindia.com by Tata and Philips. Uh, respectively <clears throat> okay next is cyber extortion what is extortion extortion means it's simple extortion means that is some um, if any person um, involving an attack or a threat of attack against an uh, uh, company or demanding uh, 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 in call uh, they are demanding uh, they are giving a threat of attack and demanding some money uh, for to avoid or to stop the attack okay uh, for example a phone call uh, phone call if you're getting a phone call that is uh, your child has been kidnapped so we we want to get so much of money then only we will um, leave the child so if you give uh, give us this uh, amount of money will give uh, give back your child this is what called extortion so cyber extortion is that attacking or uh, giving a threat uh, against a person or an enterprise enterprise for the request of money so for, uh, in this today the distributed denial of service attacks are also the bread and butter of cyber extortionist so the denial of service is also i've already explained what is denial of service so this this is also a bread and butter for the cyber extortionist next the hackers overwhelm a target server with a malicious software or a traffic there um, typically attacker will use a botnet uh, and uh, to generate a flood of traffic or on the server Next is the traffic sends more connection requests than a server can handle or the botnet sends the target huge amount of data to use its bandwidth. Okay. Next is they use this extortion, cyber extortion method for uh, just to stopping, uh, shutting down a company or uh, to... Uh, the hacker may be able to remotely access the control panels and starting deleting the files, necessary files to keep the site or business running. So the cyber uh, exo uh, what is the risk of being uh, is that held hostage by the cyber attackers. So and uh, any of your uh, websites or co computer systems or servers, they'll, they'll say if you just then uh, give me this uh, amount of money which is demanded by the hacker or the 
the stalker or the cyber attackers and you have you will be uh, you will have to give the same money and for the stop of attacking your websites so there are a few uh, few more attacks also that is uh, for the business purpose or the for, for the pol political uh, 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 benefits they'll approach some small business operate with the help of some computers cyber extortion is a growing problem nowadays okay they'll attack us will seize and desist the with their demands have been met okay next is cyber warfare cyber warfare is that it is an internet based conflict which is involving politically motivated attacks and information and information systems so uh, this attack can be a uh, disable of official uh, this can be uh, disabling like official websites and networks disrupt or disable essential services or uh, stealing or altering classified data and crippling the financial system can be many other possibilities also this is what called cyber uh, warfare okay the cyber warfare is also known as cyber war so this was cyber uh, warfare involves the following attack methods that is one is sabotage and next is espionage what is sabotage sabotage is that uh, to damage or destroy an equipment or a weapons or buildings in order to prevent the success of an enemy or a competitor okay so the they uh, mostly target the military and uh, military and financial computer system and uh, for disruption of the normal operations and equipment like uh, communications fuel power and transportation infrastructures next is espionage what is espionage it is an unethical act of violating the uh, privacy and security of an organization in order to uh, leak the data or disclose internal or private or confidential information is called cyber espionage and can be performed by uh, individuals like organization or governments for the direct purpose of causing harm to the uh, violated uh, in uh, entity or to benefit individual organization or the government okay so this this is an illegal exploitation methods are used to disable networks software computers or the internet to to steal or acquire classified information for the rival institutions uh, or the individual for the military political or the financial gain simply it is that to spoil any kind of institutions uh, to damage or to crash their entire system to get their database or their personal information uh, we use this cyber warfare method next is cyber terrorism cyber terrorism as it is given it is a premeditated uh, attack against a computer system computer data programs and other information with the sole aim of a violence against a clandestine agents and subnational groups so the cyber terrorism is that anything which happen to uh, damage the sovereignty of our country through the uh, computers is called cyber terrorism anything which is uh, any uh, crime to happen uh, uh, to destroy a place or a country is, is called uh, through the computer is called cyber terrorism so this can be simple or advanced or complex okay this simple is that simple is that this consists of basic attacks including the hacking of an individual system next is advanced advanced these are the most sophisticated attacks and can involve hacking multiple system and or the network so the simple system is attack cyber in simple system in cyber terrorism is that attacking an individual system advanced is that hacking multiple system or the network this next is complex these are the coordinated attacks that can have a large scale impact and make use of the sophisticated uh, sophisticated tools so this complex uh, cyber crime is that it can uh, have a large impact over uh, by using the Uh, sophisticated tools next is phishing this is also explained uh, earlier phishing is same like as phishing um that is uh, by send uh, phishing uh, phishing can be like uh, 
this is just to get the information or sensitive information or the private uh, information of a particular uh, person like credit card numbers personal identification numbers or the accounts usernames and passwords uh, for the using the complex set of social engineering techniques and com uh, computer programs expertise phishing websites lure email recipients and web users into believing that a spoofed message is legitimate and genuine which means that they send message uh, which may uh, which makes the um, or believe the other per we believe the person that is it, this message has been uh, come from the genuine or a legitimate uh, company or a website okay so by uh, um, by sending some messages or by through the phone calls or the, through the automated version uh, automated messages uh, through the phone calls or emails um, and uh, by sending some url uh, to get the wide uh, information wide information of a person uh, this is this phishing is done for the identity uh, theft okay so the phishing uses link manipulation image filter evasion and a website of forgery to fool web users to think that the spoofed, uh, spoofed messages is genuine and legitimate so they think that the message is being come from the genuine uh, genuine website so they'll uh, they click the message or they'll go uh, they'll they click the url and uh, they start to fill the uh, details which has been asked there so by that the hackers or the attackers can easily uh, get your personal information okay next is fortunately personal uh, physical uh, Phishing victimization is preventable. The following security precautions are recommended. First is use updated computer security tools such as antivirus software, spyware, and firewall. Never open unknown or suspicious email att attachments. Never di divulge personal information requested by email such as your name or a credit card number. Double check the website URL for the legitimacy by typing the actual address in your web browser. Verify the website phone number before placing any calls to the phone number provided by via uh, email. Okay, next is wishing. Wishing is that voice and phishing. That is, it is V-O-I-P. Wishing is that through the telephone, you are sending some voice messages to steal the identities and financial resources. So wishing is same like as phishing. There's the only difference is you are, you'll be sending the messages uh, for uh, for the uh, access of the uh, illegal access of the data uh, to steal their informations and uh, financial resources. So wishing attacks are designed to generate a fear and immediate response. So when they hear this automated messages through a phone call, they'll uh, the person will immediately will respond to that particular thing and they'll start typing uh, the, which information has been asked. Uh, for say uh, your uh, uh, account number, your um, passwords, your credit card information or something like that. So why uh, they will uh, if they get a phone call suddenly they the person will get panic and they'll start typing all these messages through this uh, sorry to uh, information through this the wisher will get all the personal details of that particular person including the bank details okay this is what called wishing next is smishing smishing is that same uh, phishing is done through the messages so they'll send some uh, message to your phone by uh, uh, they'll ask you to send uh, to click the uh, url uh, that is you know unified resource locator just a link and then if you click that link they'll ask you ask you to uh, fill some details or they'll ask you to uh, uh, download some uh, particular app or something like that and by downloading that particular app you will start giving you will start allowing uh, um or giving your personal information in that particular app. So by giving this, the uh, uh, inadvertently the downloading the malware and without knowing you are uh, downloading the malware and started installing a Trojan without the user knowledge. So phishing is all about extracting the useful information of a person. Okay, so then the tra uh, Trojan harvest the data areas of the cell phone and transmit them to the person who created the uh, Trojan at the earliest opportunity. So this is what called SMS phishing is called smishing. Okay. So this smishing is, uh, is 
for the identity theft for uh, someone's firm, uh, monetary gain by uh, uh, increase the vulnerability of online banking and other accounts uh, storing the um, uh, stealing the data next is farming farming is also like uh, fishing that is uh, the attackers use the malware to ch uh, change the host file or uh, perpetuate the dns cac by poisoning next uh, the victims uh, sometimes the victims type a correct ul but his browser gets to the ip address of the fraudulent website so when the once the victim will uh, type the exact address but it will be rerouted to the um, fraudulent website next uh, victim provides some sensitive financial they uh, they use they victim provides some sensitive financial or personal information to a identical looking fake websites and um, sensitive data goes to the attacker so what they do they'll uh, the attackers by rearranging your host file and, and the victim will start to giving the data which has been asked in that particular they, victim may type the correct ip address but it will get rerouted to the um, fake address and he'll give the his own uh, valuable information the, so the attackers will start to gain the information uh, so get the sensitive data and goes to the attackers next is routers routers have been uh, surfacing as being as a vulnerable to farming so this is uh, router is so vulnerable to farming as host files and for, uh, this routing uh, farming is much more difficult to detect harmful dns information okay first is exist existing administrator settings can be incorrectly configured so uh, next is entire rewrites to embedded software can occur so this it will be very hard to find the um, uh, dns which is the correct uh, uh, network services so will be uh, the right routers will be uh, will not be able to find which is the correct network service providers so without knowing he will be uh, rerouting to this um, a fake websites which has been given by the um, which has been uh, done by the uh, farming attackers and we will lose our all the valuable it will our informations will be uh, rerouted uh, will be given um, taken by the attackers so if um, this is uh, phishing is very easily to easy way to identify and uh, we can uh, control or we can react to it uh, easily but farming is little bit difficult to identify whether it has been done uh, the farming has been happened or not so if none of these suggestions are uh, like uh, suggestion uh, one of the suggestion is that to prevent ourselves uh, from this farming is that for my uh, mitigating these problems include asking registers for their return policies as well as insisting on in immediate notification uh, should a register receive a domain move request the other suggestion is that including keeping uh, domains locked and keeping authoritative contact information current as well as using the registers with round the clock availability if doesn't have work these two if these two suggestions doesn't work in preventing farming contacting very sign which is the domain domain registry for, uh, for .com and .net may be useful so that's all for the uh, today's video so the next class we will be seeing about the computer insecurity so thank you for watching please let us know uh, your queries and hope you like the video Thank you for watching.